One of the more surprising draft trades happened a couple days before the draft actually happened, and that was Frank Clark going from the Seahawks to the Kansas City Chiefs. He's definitely been one of the more underrated players in the league for quite some time now, as he has 32 sacks combined in the past three seasons. His best season of which was last season when he had 13 sacks, so he's definitely a very talented player. I don't think there's any real arguments there. And being that the Seahawks picked him up with a 63rd overall pick, he's definitely more than lived up to his expectations coming out of draft night. So getting a very good player in exchange for a first and second round pick isn't really anything too shocking, I think a lot of people can sort of understand the strategy behind that. But I think there's two reasons why the Chiefs have gotten some criticism for this move. The first of which is that they're paying him a five-year contract worth $105.5 million. And $63.5 million of that is guaranteed. So they're definitely giving him a decent amount of money. And when you add on to the fact that they decided to not give D4 big money, it definitely is a little bit head-scratching to say the least. Because while I think many would agree that Frank Clark is a slightly better player than D4, the question is, is he so much better that he's worth a first and second overall pick? I think they're very valid concerns, but first let's just get into what makes Frank Clark so great. Like on this play for example, Frank Clark is going to be going against that right tackle right there, however it's not quite a 1-on-1 -on -one matchup as a halfback is going to move in to chip him. It makes sense, if you're going up against a great defensive end, you will often chip him just to make sure that he can't get in good positioning. If Frank Clark does try to run in that direction to try to run around the tackle, then you can simply just hit him into the tackle and allows your tackle to get better hand placement. That's the whole point of a chip. However, take a look at what he's going to end up doing here. He's going to go to the inside of that tackle. This is a risk because you're giving up containment. Basically, you're betting on yourself here and saying that you think you're quick enough that you can get to the quarterback before the quarterback can run to the outside. I bet most coaches would advise you to not do this. However, Frank Clark is so fast that he is able to get to Derek Carr and get a sack. This is kind of one of those plays that coaches on the sideline are saying, no, what are you doing? Oh, uh, good play, Frank. I knew you should do that all along. It's the type of play that you'll get chewed out on the sidelines if you can't pull it off, but if you can pull it off, you'll get plenty of high fives. And one of the reasons why Oakland tackle was so fooled by Frank Clark going to the inside is the fact that Frank Clark is so deadly when going to the outside. I mean, he's one of the best in the league at doing it, and this play will be an example of that. As you see right now, he's on the left side of the screen, so he's going up against the left tackle. There's no halfback or tight end on this play, so this is simply just one-on-one. -on -one. one thing you'll want to notice is look at how far that left arm is away from Frank Clark. I and mean, that's just too far away to do anything with, because typically if you're a tackle, you're going to want to get your arm right there, right on Frank Clark's right shoulder pad. But you can't do it there because he's too far away. I mean, look at how far away he is. He's almost a full yard past him. So when the tackle does finally try to get his arm on him, Frank Clark's able to just put his left arm down and just swat it out of the way. From here, Clark's able to basically just get a straight shot at the car and knocks the ball out. Now, once again, this is the type of play that can backfire. If you're not quick enough, then running too far to the outside, kind of just take yourself out of the play. Especially when going up against Derek Carr, who does get the ball out so quickly, it can be a bit of a risky play. But because Clark is quick enough, he still trusts his speed that he'll be able to go over and make a play, and that's exactly what he was able to do. So he clearly has great speed, but he also has great awareness as well. Like, if we take a look at this play, it is going to be a one-on-one -on -one block with the left tackle blocking Clark. And it's actually going to play action where the halfback is going to be running in that direction. So this is a tough play for Clark because he has to read that it's a play action and then get over to the quarterback to try to make a play. And Colton Miller actually has a very good job of attacking Clark on this play as you would if it was a running play. He's selling as though it's going to be a run block and Clark believes it. However, take a look at what Clark is doing here. One advantage that he has is that his right arm is on the outside of Miller's left arm on this play. And that matters because he is going to have to quickly realize that this is going to be a pass. And as soon as he does, he's going to move his left arm back and basically just pull Miller over to his right. And when I say his right, I mean Clark's right. Because now as you take a look, his left arm is pushing Miller to that side of the screen. And now Clark can simply just run over on top of him and then go over to get the car. It's a great job of being very aware of what's going on by saying, oh wait, this isn't a running play. I have to run over and try to get the car. And it was also a great job of just using his hands to get that tackle out of the way. It was really just great awareness by Clark on that one. It was really just a smart play. You love a guy who is smart, and especially when they're a freak athlete like Frank Clark is, there's really nothing wrong with him. And so what do you do if you have a fast edge rusher? Well, sometimes you'll have him swing over. Like on this play, what Seattle is going to do is have their interior lineman run to the left guard's left side of his body, which will then force the left guard to move over and block him. And then Clark can simply just run over to the left guard's right and try to get into the play that way. However, one problem on this play is that that center doesn't have an assigned man to block on this one. He's in zone. His entire job really is just make sure that you clear up the middle. That's all he's trying to do on this one. And since Seattle is trying to rush a guy through the middle, this now means that he is very important on this play. Because as you see, once Clark does swing around, now if you're a center, you're in a great position to try to make a block. It almost probably feels like a luxury if you're a center in this play because you can block with your head up, which is something that a center can't often do. But watch what Clark's going to do here. He's basically just going to treat this as though he's going up against a tackle, where he's going to put a majority of his contact on one side of that center's body. And because he does have a running start, this now means that he'll have some extra power, which means that he can try to do some real damage right over there. He already has the speed to make this work, but now let's see if he has the strength to make it work, and he absolutely does. I mean, you can see that center just sort of lump over and try to pick up his quarterback because he knows he just got beat on that one. And you can't really 
really blame him. I mean, Frank Clark going one-on-one -on -one against a center with a running start, it's just not fair. I know D Ford is so fast and can run so quickly, but really Clark can run just as quickly. Like on this one, one thing worth noting is that Chicago does have a tight end in the game, so Clark does have to be a little bit wary of that. However, instead it's actually going to be a tackle who's going over to block him, and since Clark is going to be going to the bottom half of the screen, this now means that a tackle should have more time to try to get into position because there was a tight end in the game. Clark is going to have to run further to the bottom half of the screen, meaning a tackle will have an extra split second to get over, but the problem of course is look at how fast Clark is going to get off. I mean that's just insanely quick, I mean that's just not fair if you're a tackle, and now you're basically completely turned to the wrong side of the screen. If you're a tackle, you have absolutely no hope with this play. The only thing you can do is try to push Clark behind you using both hands and try to get it on to Clark right side of his body and just push him back. That's all you can do, that's your only hope, but that's not going to work out too well either. He's barely even able to get a hand on him because Clark was so quick and then he's able to reach his arm out and get the Trubisky for a sack. I mean that's just not fair really, I mean that's just insane speed by Clark and one of the things that makes him so talented. And it's not just his speed too, I mean this guy has footwork as well, he can move around and change his body weight very well if he has to. Like on this one, he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup against Tyron Smith who's definitely far from a scrub, he's one of the best tackles who's in the league. So one thing Clark's going to do is try to run to the outside, and notice how he puts his right arm basically right there on Tyron Smith's left arm. He's doing this to try to get around Smith. He wants to get around Smith and then try to get to the back of Prescott and try to maybe even knock the ball out for a sack. That's basically the goal here from Clark. But the problem with that is that Smith has some of the best footwork in the league, and he is able to go back. Because he's able to run back in that direction, he's now blocking Clark, and now Clark doesn't have a ton of room to run. So as of right now, this is kind of a bad play from Clark, right? I mean, this is kind of a play that you wouldn't show in a highlight reel about Clark. This is the kind of play you would show in a low light reel about Clark. He got beat. Granted, he got beat by one of the best tackles in the game, but he still got beat up to this point, right? But the one thing this play is going to go back to is the type of thing that every play goes back to, and that's awareness. As you notice right there, there's definitely a huge gap, and he knows that Prescott is a quarterback that likes to run, so he's going to assume that Prescott is going to try to run in that direction. So he's going to do a great job of stopping on a dime, breaking up to the top half of the screen, and tackling Dak Prescott. So again, why am I showing that play? I mean, he wasn't very dominant on that play at all, so that shouldn't be a play I should be bringing up, right? I mean, he kind of got beat. And yeah, he did kind of get beat, but that's why I'm bringing it up, because every guy is going to get beat. It's like that Confucius quote of, Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. It's true, and that's one of the things that I really like about a player is that when a play doesn't work out the way they want it to, still finding a way to get into the play. Yes, it's very satisfying when a guy just owns their one-on-one -on -one matchup, but as I've already shown, Clark can do that too. But having a guy who even when gets beat can still find ways to get into the play is so valuable in this league. One of the things that I kind of haven't touched on enough, but I do want to bring up now, is his strength. I mean, I mentioned it a little bit when he owned that center earlier, but really, his strength is really key. That's kind of one of the things he has on D Ford. While D Ford's definitely not a weak guy, Frank Clark is just sort of on another level in terms of strength. This one's going to be a good example of that, as that right tackle is going to be blocking Frank Clark one-on-one. -on -one. Now, typically, what would Clark do? Well, he would just run around like that, like where that arrow is. However, the problem with that is there is a halfback in this game. And since the halfback is so far over from Rodgers, if you're Frank Clark, you can't have kind of an idea. It's probably not going to be a run. It could sort of be a delayed handoff, but the chances of that are slim. It's probably going to be a passing play on this one. And so that now means that there's two things that could be happening. Either he could be running a route to the right side of the screen, or he could be blocking on this play. And so Frank Clark wanting to make sure that he avoids a potential chip is basically going to initiate contact with that right tackle. If you notice right now what that tackle is doing, it actually has his arms around Frank Clark's body. He has him on the outside of Frank Clark's arm. If you've ever watched Brett Coleman's videos, he made a video talking about how the Packers do this a lot, where they have their arms around the guy, kind of like a hug technique as he called it. If you somehow stumbled on my videos and haven't stumbled on his, you should definitely check him out. He makes a lot better videos than I do. But really, when you're an offensive lineman and you do have your arms to the outside like this, it makes it a lot tougher for a defensive player to try to get around you, but it makes it a lot easier for a defensive player to try to get through you. So basically, this now means that speed isn't going to be as effective for Clark. Right now, he's going to have to focus on power here, but luckily for him, he's a very powerful guy. I mean, look at how far he has Brian Beluga over. I mean, he's completely off balance at this point. This is just pushing a guy back and using your strength to beat a tackle, and that's exactly what Clark was able to do there. And of course, so when you have great speed and great strength, that can really go to your advantage, and this play will be an example of exactly that. One thing worth noting right off the bat is that Seattle has a defensive tackle in the one technique right there, which in theory will pull that center up to make sure he blocks him. He's also in the one technique on the left, which means that you're going to try to block naturally in that direction. From here, it's pretty simple. You have your other interior lineman make sure he goes right there, which in theory will pull the right guard over to the right side of the screen, and then you simply send Clark through that gap right over there. So now this play is going to kind of work, but only kind of. Minnesota's right guard does a very good job of coming back and making sure that he's still going to get in Frank Clark's way. He realized the play that was happening and did get back and try to make that block. But of course, Clark did have a running start, and that guard is very much out of position. So basically, when he tries to make the block, Clark can just run over him and still get the Cousins for a sack. 
Really, he just overpowered him on that one. And I mean, granted, the guard was off balance, but hey, if you're an edge rusher, you have to be able to run over guys who are off balance, and Clark was easily able to do that. Clark's speed and power really is what makes him so effective, and this play will probably be the best example of that from last year. He's going up against a left tackle, and after this play develops, take a look at what he's going to do here. Basically, what he's trying to do is put his left arm right there on that tackle's left shoulder pad. This is key, because as I mentioned before, a tackle really wants to get his left arm right there, all the way over on the right shoulder pad. So since Clark is going for the left shoulder pad, this means he has less distance to try to cover. Now, as you notice, the tackle isn't able to get really anywhere close. His hand's actually on the left side of Clark's body instead of all the way on the right shoulder pad, which is a very far distance away from where he wants it to be. And also, Clark can put his right arm right there onto the hand, and now he's able to get great hand placement. He's able to run by the tackle, and when the tackle tries to get in his way, he's able to just push over the tackle and then get the Rosen. The ball comes flying out, and it's all because of Clark on that play. It's plays like that just, just make you go, oh man, this guy is just unreal. His talent is completely off the charts, and he really is just remarkable. There's one more play I wanted to bring up with Frank Clark, and it's not one that you're going to immediately realize why I'm bringing it up. Basically what's going to happen is they are going to have a right tackle go over to block him, and they're also going to be sending a halfback over to chip him to the right side of the screen. So as of right now, the tackle is doing a very good job of starting that initial block, which means that Frank Clark is going to try to go to the bottom half of the screen. But now, because of the good chip by David Johnson, this now means that Frank Clark has been completely taken out of the play. So why am I bringing that up? I mean, okay, Frank Clark got beat when there was a good chip. I mean, that happens all the time. Not really anything too fancy there. However, there's a couple of reasons why I'm bringing it up. For one thing, they had the halfback chip to the right side of the screen, which means they were paying Frank Clark extra attention and couldn't pay anyone else extra attention. Seattle was able to get a sack fumble out of that, so at least in some small way, he definitely contributed. But also, this is where awareness comes in. The ball pops out, and he's able to see it and fall on it. I mean, that's just being aware of your surroundings and realizing what's going on. It's not like he knew the ball was going to pop out in that direction, but he did see it and was able to jump on it. He certainly wasn't the key guy on that play by any means. I mean, he just absolutely wasn't. However, he still did his part. When you have a guy who can take advantage of plays like that, it really can't add a lot to a defense, and that's one of the many reasons why the Chiefs went out and got him. I mean, they were so close to going to the Super Bowl last season, and it's a very real possibility they could get there next year. Although they are the Chiefs, and they can't have nice things, so who really knows?